Hey everyone, and welcome to another deep dive with us. Today we're doing something really unique. We're diving into the world of Ethio jazz. A fascinating genre, you know, blending Ethiopian traditions with that, that improvisational energy of jazz. Yeah, and we're actually going to be looking at it from two perspectives. We're going to be looking at the factual history and characteristics of Ethio jazz. But also like stepping into a different world uh, through a fictional lens. Right. We've got an AI generated album and story about a band performing in Addis Ababa. Back in 1967. Yeah. Back in 1967. It's uh, it's pretty wild what AI can do these days. It really is. Our fictional band is called Awawe. Brothers in Harmony. Brothers in Harmony, exactly. For those of us who don't read Americ. Yeah, yeah. So before we get into that world, right. let's let's lay some groundwork. What what exactly is Ethio Jazz? Yeah, so for folks who haven't had the pleasure of experiencing Ethio Jazz before, how would you describe it? What are we dealing with here? Hmm, imagine, picture like a vibrant musical conversation. Yeah. Between Ethiopia's, its deep musical roots, and, and then you've got that spontaneous energy of jazz. Wow. And it really started taking shape in the 1960s, blending those soulful Ethiopian melodies and scales with jazz improvisation. And it doesn't stop there. Right. You often hear elements of funk, soul, even Afrobeat kind of woven in there. Wow, so it's it's a real melting pot of sounds. It is, it is a really rich tapestry. So, so it's more than just you know, throwing some Ethiopian instruments into a jazz ensemble. What are what are some of the musical elements that really make Ethio jazz unique? What sets it apart? Well, the scales themselves are are key. Ethiopian music uses these distinctive scales like embassel, tisita, and kihoye and bati. These scales have a distinct flavor. You know, mm -hmm. each of them carries a certain feeling. Take, for example, the tisita scale. It's often associated with with nostalgia oh. and longing which gives Ethio Jazz this this melancholic yet hopeful feeling. Oh, interesting. So the so the music itself is already kind of telling a story. It is. It is. It's carrying centuries of emotion and history within it. And and then in terms of the instruments, do we do we see traditional Ethiopian instruments sort of jamming alongside a, a typical jazz setup? No, absolutely. You'll hear instruments like the crar. The crar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a lyre-like instrument, and it, it plucks out these really hypnotic melodies. Then you've got the masenko. Masenko. A one-stringed fiddle. Adds this almost mournful, haunting texture to the music. Wow. And those are alongside, you know, your classic jazz instruments, mm -hmm. saxophones, keyboards, drums. Right. So you've got you've got both worlds represented in the instrumentation. Exactly. Creating this really captivating blend. Now what about what about the rhythms? Ethiopian music's known for having some pretty intricate rhythms. How does that play into Ethio jazz? Oh, definitely. It's it's polyrhythmic, mm. you know, drawing inspiration from folk dances and traditional drum patterns. And then those rhythms are layered with funk and Afrobeat grooves. Okay. Giving you this vibrant and complex texture that makes you want to move. So we're talking about music that's that's deeply rooted in tradition, but also just bursting with this energy and improvisation. Right, right. Now thinking about the, the, the historical context, I mean, this fusion of styles, right. this couldn't have just emerged in a vacuum. It must have resonated with what was happening in Ethiopia at the time, particularly in the 1960s. You're exactly right. This was a time of huge cultural and artistic energy in Ethiopia. Uh, especially in its capital, Addis Ababa, mate. Ethio jazz exploded onto the scene, becoming oh. like the soundtrack oh. to the city's nightlife. And it represented this this modern yeah. cosmopolitan outlook, right. reflecting Ethiopia's openness to new ideas, global influences. It's like the music itself embodies that spirit. Absolutely. Of progress and change and, and openness. Yeah. But then... Things took a bit of a darker turn, right, mm. with the Derg regime. Sadly, yeah. The music scene faced some challenges when the Derg regime came into power in 1974. Yeah, I was reading about that. They were, you know, all about control. They saw artistic expression, especially something as free-flowing as Ethio jazz, yeah. as a potential threat. Right. So many musicians ended up having to flee the country, you know, just to be able to keep playing. Yeah, it's... It's heartbreaking to think about that kind of suppression of artistic expression. It is. But Ethio Jazz, it didn't just disappear completely, did it? Thankfully not, no. Great music has a way of, you know, finding a way. Mm -hmm. By the late 1990s, Ethio Jazz started experiencing this revival. So what contributed to this, this resurgence? Was it just a renewed interest within Ethiopia? Or did the international music scene start taking notice? What happened? 
It was a bit of both, actually. A big part of it was the growing recognition of Malatu Astake. Astake, yeah. On an international level. Right. His music reached a much wider audience, particularly after being featured in Jim Jarmusch's film Broken Flowers. Oh, yeah, back in 2005. Back in 2005. Yeah, the power of film. Right. It can really introduce a whole new generation to a genre. And since then, Ethio Jazz has been, I mean, it's been on an upward trajectory. Yeah. You know, both established Ethiopian artists and international musicians, everyone's drawing inspiration from it. So it's really kind of having a, a global moment. It is. Which is amazing. It's really cool to see. Okay, so we've got this rich history, this modern revival, and now... Now for the really unique part. Let's talk about the AI-generated side of our deep dive. This is where things get really interesting. We're, we're talking about stepping into a smoky jazz club in Addis Ababa. Oh, wow. Back in 1967. That's exactly what this AI project lets us do. We're going to be listening to Yedisima Tarek. Yedisima Tarek. Which means The Herd Story. It's an entire album created by AI. Wow. Featuring our fictional band, Brothers in Harmony. Okay, so so unpack that a little bit for me. We've got this album. Yeah. But it's not just music. Right. Right, there's a whole narrative woven into this. Exactly. The AI didn't just compose the music. Uh. It also created a detailed story. That takes us inside the world of this band. And it's all set in this, this 1967 Addis Ababa Jazz Club. So it really is like stepping back in time. It is, it is. Right into the heart of the Ethio jazz scene. Now, there was one detail about this project that really caught my eye. Yeah. The AI, despite being given like gender neutral prompts. Oh yeah. Chose to include a female vocalist. Yes. Singing in Amharic. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting. I did too. It's it's fascinating. It could be, you know, a reflection of the significance of female voices in Ethiopian music, mm. even if the they weren't always given, you know, equal prominence. So it's almost like the AI is is picking up on these these cultural nuances. It is. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's making its own statement in a way. Yeah. So are you ready to dive into the story itself mm -hmm. and actually experience some of this AI generated Ethio jazz magic? Absolutely. Let's step into that 1967 jazz club and see what what the herd story has to tell. All right. So we're going to go through some some key chapters from the story that accompanies this album, mm -hmm. focusing on moments that really reveal the the dynamics between the brothers, yeah, their connection to their heritage and how their music kind of paints the atmosphere of the club. Sounds good. So the story centers around two brothers. Sammy. Sammy, the younger brother. Yeah, the keyboardist. Mm -hmm. And Daniel. The older brother. The older brother. And in the first chapter, it's called A Table Reserved, we see them getting ready for their set. It's a quiet moment. Yeah. But you can already feel that that unspoken understanding between them. Right. The shared passion for their music and, mm -hmm. and the weight of their family's musical legacy. Yeah, you can just you can just feel it in that in that initial scene. Mm -hmm. And then bam, in the first yeah. note, yeah. the music just explodes onto the scene. The band kicks off their set. You can almost feel the heat of the club. Right. The the murmur of the crowd, the thrill of the music, you know, washing over everyone. It's a great description. And we see Sammy. <clears throat> completely absorbed in his keyboard solo, just captivating the audience with his talent. Like you're right there in the front row. You are, you are. Feeling the music. Yeah. Then there's this chapter called The Silent Conversation. Ah, uh, yes. And this is where things get really interesting for me. Because there's this beautiful moment of silent communication between the brothers. That's what I love about Ethio Jazz. Yeah. The way it allows for those unspoken conversations, those emotional exchanges that that go beyond words. Yeah. And the story really captures that that depth of connection, that shared understanding of their heritage yeah. as they're communicating through their instruments. It's like it's like their music is a language they both understand perfectly. It is. Yeah. And that then, oh boy, in the empty seat, the story throws us a curveball. Mm. Daniel, without a word, just leaves the club. Mm -hmm. And his absence just throws everything off balance. The tension. Yeah. It's palpable. It really is. It's like the air itself has thickened with worry and confusion. And the music itself seems to reflect that. It does. It does. It loses its, its direction. Mm -hmm. You can just feel that something is wrong. Right. Right. And then finally, we get to the final note. The climax of the story. The climax of the story. The brothers reunite. Mm -hmm. And all that tension that's been building just breaks. It does. Culminating in this incredibly powerful musical release. It's beautiful. That leaves a lasting impact on 
on everyone in the club. It's a it's a testament to the power of music to heal and bring people together, you know. The story does such a phenomenal job of of capturing how music can express those those deep-seated emotions, those feelings that words can't quite grasp. It's like all those unspoken words, the worry, the relief. Yeah. It all just comes pouring out through that final performance. It's cathartic. It really is. It is. It's a beautiful reminder that even when we're faced with conflict and uncertainty, these shared passions, especially love for music, mm. can just overcome any obstacle. It's a testament to the power of human connection, especially that, you know, unbreakable bond between brothers. It's a beautiful story. It is. And I love that, that even in the midst of this yeah. vibrant, bustling jazz club, mm -hmm. the most powerful stories mm -hmm. are told in silence. Yes. Through that universal language of music. Beautiful. Beautifully said. Wow. That story, that really took us on a journey. It did, it did. It's amazing how AI can can weave music and narrative together Yeah. to create such a powerful experience. And it really highlights, you know, music as this universal language mm -hmm. that transcends, you know, language barriers, cultural barriers. Absolutely. It speaks directly to our emotions. It really does. Yeah. It makes you wonder about, you know, the future of music creation. Is this just the beginning? Will we see like AI playing an even bigger role in in shaping genres like Ethio jazz. What do you think? Hmm, that's a fascinating question. I mean, we've seen how AI can capture the the essence of a genre, even create something, you know, entirely new, but will it ever be able to truly replicate that human spark, you know, that yeah, that intangible element that makes music so captivating? It's a great question. I mean, do you think, is it possible for AI to have soul? I, I don't know. Yeah, the million dollar question. The million dollar question. It really is. But maybe let's step back for a second and think about some of the key takeaways from our, our deep dive into Ethio Jazz so far. Mm. What what really stands out to you? What are some of the things that have resonated with you? For me, it's, it's that fusion mm -hmm. of tradition and innovation. You know, Ethio Jazz really showcases how a culture's musical heritage can, can evolve, adapt, right. mm -hmm. embrace new influences without losing its roots. Yeah, it's like, it's like this conversation between the past and the present. It is. Right. You're, you're honoring the tradition, mm -hmm. but you're also pushing it forward. Yeah, it's a dialogue. It keeps the tradition alive while pushing it in, in these exciting new directions. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about Mulatu Ostaki mm -hmm. and his impact bringing Ethio jazz to a global audience. Yeah. But do you think... Do you think his success was really representative? That's a great question. Of the broader Ethio jazz scene? Yeah. Or were there other artists maybe who who deserve that kind of recognition but but didn't get it for whatever reason? That's a that's a really great point. While a stack is undoubtedly a key figure, it's important to remember that he was part of a, a vibrant community right. of musicians who are all contributing to the evolution of Ethio jazz. Right, right. And and yeah, there were many talented artists who, for various reasons, you know, didn't achieve the same level of international fame. Right. It makes you wonder about about the role of, you know, chance and opportunity mm -hmm. and maybe even, you know, cultural bias in in shaping these musical success stories. Absolutely. There are countless stories out there yeah. of talented musicians whose whose work remains largely unknown outside of their own communities. Right. And and it's on us to to keep exploring, to dig deeper mm -hmm. and uncover those hidden gems. I like that it's like being a musical archaeologist. It is, it is. Right. Unearthing these treasures and and sharing them with the world. Yes. And now it feels like with with AI in the mix, it's like we're entering this this whole new era mm -hmm. of musical discovery. You know? Yeah, it's both exciting mm -hmm. and a bit daunting. Right. On the one hand, AI has this potential to break down barriers, mm -hmm. to connect people across cultures mm -hmm. through music in ways we never thought possible. Yeah, Im imagine, imagine algorithms mm -hmm. that could just seamlessly blend, mm -hmm. you know, musical traditions from from opposite sides of the globe yeah and create these these entirely new soundscapes that that really reflect the the diversity of human experience it's a it's a tantalizing possibility but it also it raises some some important questions right. about authenticity about mm -hmm. ownership and and the role of human creativity in a in a world where machines can compose music yeah it's it's a tightrope walk for sure it is we need to be we need to be mindful mm -hmm. of those ethical considerations while also you know 
embracing the creative potential that that AI offers. Absolutely. We need to ensure that AI is used as a tool to enhance and amplify human creativity, mm. not replace it. Right. Not to replace it. Yeah. It's about finding that balance, yeah. that sweet spot yeah. where technology and artistry can coexist and inspire each other. And maybe, just maybe, AI can even help us to rediscover the beauty mm -hmm. and complexity of, of existing genres like ethio jazz, right? Introducing them to new audiences mm -hmm. and ensuring that these these musical traditions continue to thrive. I love that idea. Imagine AI algorithms that can analyze these vast musical libraries, yeah. identifying hidden patterns and connections between you know seemingly disparate genres. It yeah. could lead to the discovery of like musical relatives we never knew existed. Right. You know, bridging cultures and expanding our our appreciation for for the diversity of human expression. It's like a musical matchmaker. Right. Connecting us to to sounds and rhythms that resonate with our souls, even if they come from cultures completely different from our own. And who knows, maybe AI can even help to revitalize endangered musical cultures. Oh, wow. You know, preserving those precious traditions for future generations. Yeah, it's like it's like a digital time capsule. It is. Capturing the essence of a musical culture and making sure that it's it's never forgotten. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, at the end of the day. It's up to us as listeners and music lovers to be curious, mm -hmm. to keep exploring, to keep our ears open to the beauty and diversity of music from around the world. So well said. It's about embracing that, that sense of wonder, mm -hmm. that childlike curiosity that drives us to discover new sounds and, and connect with others yeah. through the universal language of music. Beautifully said. And I think this this deep dive into ethio jazz has been a perfect example of that you know yeah. we've we've explored the history the instruments the rhythms and even you know stepped into a fictional world created by ai mm -hmm. to to experience the magic of this genre firsthand it's been a truly immersive journey it has and i think it's it's left us with with more questions than answers right but that's that's the beauty of it that's right? the beauty of it it's about sparking that curiosity, that yeah. desire to learn more, yeah. to listen more deeply, mm -hmm. and to appreciate the power of music to connect us all. I love that. Mm -hmm. So as we as we kind of wrap up this part of our deep dive, yeah. what are what are some of your final thoughts? What's what's really resonated with you the most? For me it's it's this reminder that music is more than just entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a powerful force that can shape our our understanding of the world and ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, it can connect us to the past, mm -hmm. inspire us in the present, mm -hmm. and give us a glimpse into the future. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen with Ethio Jazz, yeah. it can transcend boundaries, blend cultures, and create something truly unique and beautiful. Wow. Those are some powerful words. And I think they they perfectly capture, you know, what the deep dive is all about. Mm -hmm. you know, exploring those those deeper connections, mm -hmm. those hidden layers of meaning mm -hmm. that that make music such an essential part of the human experience. Absolutely. And as we wrap up this part of our deep dive, I I encourage you to keep listening, to keep exploring, mm -hmm. and to let the music guide you on your own personal journey of discovery. Beautifully said. It's been quite a journey, hasn't it? Exploring the world of Ethio Jazz. It really has. Uncovering its roots, feeling those rhythms, and even like traveling back in time with that AI-generated story. Yeah, and grappling with you know, these big questions about how AI might shape the future of music. A lot to think about, for sure, both the possibilities and, and the ethical considerations that come with it. Absolutely. So as we, as we wrap things up, yeah. I want to leave you with a final thought. Okay. Something to ponder as as you continue your own exploration of Ethio Jazz. All right, I'm I'm ready. Uh -oh. Lay it on me. Given everything we've discussed, how do you think genres like Ethio Jazz might evolve in the future, especially with AI playing a, a bigger and bigger role in music creation? Wow, that's that's a great question. I mean, it makes you think about the potential for AI to to both preserve mm -hmm. and innovate within within traditional genres, right? Could it become a tool for yeah. for revitalizing these musical traditions, making them accessible to to new audiences in ways that we haven't even thought of yet? It's an interesting thought. Imagine AI-powered platforms that 
that curate personalized musical experiences. Oh, wow. You know, introducing listeners to genres like Ethio Jazz based on their their individual tastes, yeah. their preferences. It's like having like a global music library at your fingertips with, with AI as your guide right, leading you on this this journey of sonic discovery. But could it also lead to the creation of like entirely new subgenres? You know? Blurring the lines between musical traditions even further. Yeah. It's possible. I mean, AI algorithms could analyze this massive amounts of musical data, identifying those hidden connections, patterns between genres, creating these hybrids that, that fuse elements from different cultures. Who knows what could emerge? Yeah, it's like a musical melting pot with, with AI as the, the master chef. You yeah. Know, blending these ingredients from all over the world to create something new and, and yeah. unexpected. Exactly. But it, it does raise the question of, of how we make sure that these advancements are being used to to enhance human creativity rather than replace it. That's the key. It's about finding that balance, that sweet spot where technology and artistry can can coexist and inspire each other. AI should be a tool for amplifying the human voice, not silencing it. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. It's on us as as music lovers to approach these advancements with a a discerning ear. Mm -hmm. A, a critical mind and an open heart. Absolutely. Curious, yeah. but cautious. Embracing the potential of AI while being mindful of its limitations. Yeah. Ultimately, it's about using these tools to celebrate the diversity and the richness of musical expression around the world. Well, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure diving deep into the world of Ethio Jazz with you. Likewise. <laughs> I, I hope this exploration has sparked some curiosity out there mm. and inspired you to, to check out the music of Mulatu Asake. The father of Ethio Jazz. Yeah, and other artists who have who have shaped this this unique and captivating genre. And as you continue on your musical journey, keep an open mind. Yeah. An adventurous spirit hmm. and a deep appreciation for the power of music to connect us all. So well said. Thanks for joining us on this this sonic adventure. My pleasure. And remember, the world of music is vast and ever evolving. Keep exploring, keep listening and keep those ears open to new sounds and unexpected connections. Until next time.